Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Haugen. Today we're going to work on lesson five in our blue math packet. So make sure you have that in front of you. And this one gets a little bit trickier today. Um, today we're going to be working on drawing equal groups. So you see over at the right hand side, I made this little picture, so to speak, to help you remember what a row is and what a column is. So you can see over here how the row word I wrote sideways because a row goes sideways. So like these over here, these lines, these are rows, okay? Then you can see how up and down I wrote the word column because that is what a column looks like. A column goes up and down, kind of like if you've seen columns on the front of a house or like the front of the White House, for example. Those big, tall pillars, those are columns. So when we're working today, those are two words that you're going to need to remember is rows go sideways and columns go up and down. So if we look at number one, it says to first circle groups of four. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I like to just circle pictures that are close together, objects that are close together. So go ahead and circle your groups of four. Then it says, draw the triangles into two equal rows. Well, because I have two groups circled, I know that one group is going to go on the top. So I can see that I'm going to have four triangles on the top row. That's one group. And then my second group will go on the bottom. So again, I will have four triangles on the bottom. So I've done two things. I've circled groups of four, and I know that now that I have two groups, and when I look over to the side, I also have two rows. So one group goes on the top row, and the next group goes on the bottom row. Let's try another one. Number two says, circle groups of two. Redraw the groups of two as rows, then as columns. So this time they've given us lines for rows sideways and lines for columns up and down. So let me change colors and I'm going to follow the first direction. Circle groups of two. So go ahead and do that. And because I have three groups, they gave me three lines for rows and three lines for columns. So this time when I'm drawing my rows, think about how many smiley faces, or circles are okay, do I need to put on each row? Well, because I have two happy faces in each group, I will put two on each row. So there's one group of two. I have a second group of two. And I have a third group of two. And if you want to put the happy faces in there, you may, but you certainly don't have to. Then we have to redraw these in columns. So again, each line is a column, and I'm going to put two circles. So I like to do the columns just right in the middle here. That way I don't get confused as to where I'm putting them on the left side or on the right side. So again, I'm going to put two more in the middle. And then my last group will go here on this last line. So you notice I didn't change the total. I still have six circles. Six circles in the rows, six happy faces in the middle, six circles in the columns. I didn't change my total, I just rearranged how I ordered them, okay? Number three, we have a whole lot more pictures here. So the directions first say circle groups of three, 
redraw the groups of three as rows, then as columns. So let's first start in your book also, circle groups of three. There we go. And I'm counting and noticing that I have four groups. So because I have four groups, they gave me four lines for rows that go side to side. And they gave me four lines for columns that go up and down. So this is what I'm using to redraw my hearts. Now, if you can draw hearts, if the hearts are a little tricky, you can just draw a circle again, that's fine. So I notice here that in each group, I have three. So my top row needs three. And then I have a second row of three. I'm going to fix this one in the middle. Go ahead and draw yours. I have a third row of three. And if you need to pause the video anytime, of course you may do so. And then I have a fourth row of three. So I have four groups of three. Now I'm going to redraw, and this time on each column line, I'm also going to draw three circles or three hearts, whatever you did last time. So over here, I'm going to just draw small, small. So three on the first line. And again, I like to draw them right on the line so I don't get confused. Three on the second line. Keep going with your columns. And three on the last line. So if I look at the hearts in the middle and I do some combining and I add them up, I see that I have 12 hearts. So I have to be sure that I keep that total of 12 the same. So I need to make sure that when I draw on my rows, I have three, 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 and three, and that does equal 12. And then when I draw them as columns, I have three, 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 and three, and again, that does equal 12. I cannot change the total. I'm just rearranging how I'm drawing these equal groups. If you want to take this one step farther and do multiplication, I started this one for you. Four groups of three, which means multiplication would tell me that this is four times three equals 12. Again, the way to start your multiplication is to first start with this kind of a statement, four groups of three, and that will tell you how to write your multiplication problem. All right, let's go to the back. So we're only going to do um, a little bit up here at the top. So if you look at number four, it says count the objects in the arrays from left to right by rows and by columns. As you count, circle the rows, and then the columns. I'm actually going to use two different colors here so you can see the difference. So they want us to circle the rows first. So we're gonna count one row, there's two objects, three, four, there's another row, five, six, there's another row, seven, eight, there's another row, nine, 10, there's another row. So I'm just going to write that I have 10. When I counted them by rows, I had a total of 10. So how many groups did I circle here? I circled five groups of how many? Five groups of two, and that equaled 10. Now I'm going to change my color and I'm going to circle the columns. So remember, columns go up and down. So this time I'm circling one column, that's a group of five. And another column, that's a group of five. So this time I only have two groups 
that I circled, but I have five in each group. And did I change my total? I did not. My total is still 10, but I can rearrange these differently and I can combine them differently. So again, I can have five groups of two, that equals 10, or two groups of five, and that also equals 10. Let's do another one. We're going to start, I'm going to pick a different color here. So we're going to start with rows. So we have one row, that's two, another row, two more, and another row, two more. So this time I circled three groups of two. And what's my total? Good, six. Now I'm going to change colors and I'm going to circle columns. One, two. So this time I have two groups of three and my total is still six. I did not change the total, I just rearranged how I was counting them. So again, if you're looking at multiplication, these statements right here are what you would use for multiplication. But I want you to look at this. The multiplication, if you're ready for that, gets a little bit tricky because you can actually do the multiplication two different ways. If I say that I have three groups of two, that multiplication problem would be three times two equals six. However, if I have two groups of three, I flip it, and now it's two times three, but you notice that it is still a total of six. So multiplication is very similar to addition in that way, that if I know that four plus two is six, I also know that two plus four is six, and multiplication is the same way. If I know that three times two is six, I can flip that around and know that two times three equals six. Multiplication is super cool that way. Number five, we're gonna do one more. Number five says redraw the circles and stars in problem four as columns of two. Now, this gets a little bit tricky. This takes a whole lot of thinking. Redraw the circles. We're just gonna do the circles this time as columns of two. Remember, columns go up and down. So if I'm going to only draw two in a column, we need to figure out how many columns we're going to need. So I'm going to do some skip counting, just like a repeated addition, to figure out how many I need. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So now that I have my columns laid out, I can add my circles. There was two, now I have four, six, eight, and last but not least, 10. Go ahead and draw that on yours. We had columns of two. I had to keep my total of 10. I could not change my total. but I drew these in columns. Now if I look at my stars, I can also do columns of two. So I would need a total of six, right? So I would do two here, two, four, one more would give me six. So I kept my total of six, but I drew them this time in columns of two. Boys and girls, this one gets a little bit tricky. So if this is something that you need to keep practicing on, please do so. There's that second video that you can watch. There's a second page of homework that you can practice on. And if you need any help, please, please let me know. I'll talk to you soon.